Welcome to Coin Jive, and you know, I was thinking. I wanted to talk a little bit about forgiveness and redemption. I want to share a little bit about my life experiences and about life in general and how people can find themselves in a place that they can't understand how they got there and wonder if there's a way out. I know that I certainly have, and maybe you have too. We've all made bad choices in life, but I want for everyone to understand that we don't have to be defined by past bad choices. No matter where you might find yourself in your journey, if you realize that you are on the wrong path, there is the option to change that path. I hope that you find this discussion helpful wherever it is that you may be in your life right now. You may be one of those very rare people who is nearly without sin. Someone who has lived a very good life and feel that you have no need for repentance and redemption. But we all fall short to some degree, and we all need forgiveness, and we all need redemption. Even if you feel that this discussion doesn't apply directly to you, keep listening and keep an open mind. Maybe you're one of those very rare people who has had no son to speak of, really, and has never been arrested or gotten into a fight or an argument has never hurt someone's feelings, has never fudged on your taxes or driven over the speed limit. One of those very rare people who has had no secret sin, nothing that you have done or thought in private that no one else knows about. Or you may be one of those people that has committed sins in the past, but, you know, you think they weren't nearly as bad as other people's sins. You might be telling yourself, sure, I cheated on my wife or my husband, or I got drunk and did something stupid, or I was in a bad mood and I told my kids something that really hurt them deeply, even though I apologized later. Yeah, maybe I've been in a fight or two or an argument or two, or maybe I've flipped someone the bird or, or was frustrated at the cashier at the grocery store and made her feel bad about herself. Or maybe I've had some fantasies. Okay, you know, maybe they were a bit inappropriate, but hey, it was just a fantasy. You know, it was a passing thought. Everybody has fantasies. It's not like the things that I have done are as bad as the stuff that other people have done. Or maybe is it possible that you're one of the many, many people who have some sort of secret sin? And these are things that no one else knows about. Does the fact that no one else knows about them make you feel somehow less sinful? Does it make you feel somehow better than the other people whose sins have been aired out publicly? Is it a sin only if you get caught? Or is it a sin even when you don't get caught? Maybe... You're one of those people who are in the opposite position. Maybe you feel that you have sinned so much or so gravely that your sins can never be forgiven. Maybe you feel that you aren't worthy of forgiveness. Or maybe you're somewhere in between. Whether you're in the camp of feeling that your sins aren't nearly as bad as the other person's and you feel righteous enough to judge everyone else's sins. Or you're in the camp of feeling that your sins are unforgivable and you're not worthy of forgiveness or redemption or somewhere, or maybe you're somewhere in between. Wherever you are, God has a message for you. And let's take a look at it. Paul writes in Romans 3, 22 through 26. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. 
Paul also writes in 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long-suffering as a pattern for those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. He goes on to write in Ephesians 1, 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And we see in Isaiah 44, 22, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your, your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Acts 3.19, we see, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And John says in 1 John 1, 9 through 10 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Once we have recognized that we are sinners, no matter how great the sin, and we have truly repented of those sins and accepted the gift of forgiveness offered to us by God and through the sacrifice for our sins of his son, Jesus Christ, then we are renewed, our sins washed away, and we are free to move forward in life, a new person, reborn and redeemed. In Galatians 2.20, we read, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And then we must go on to live a life that is consistent with our repentance and redemption. As we see in Matthew 3, 8, Jesus says, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. We can't live a sinful life then ask for forgiveness, then go on living a sinful life after that. We have to repent, be sorry for our sins, ask God for forgiveness. He forgives us, he renews us, he washes us clean of our, of our sin, and then we Go forward from that point on a new person in Christ, sinning no more, or at least doing the best that we can to sin no more. It is clear that indeed no one is beyond redemption. No one is irredeemable. God has made a path for all to come to him to be washed clean of their sins and made pure again. We have all sinned and fallen short. Jesus said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone when a crowd condemned a woman and wanted to stone her to death for the sin of adultery. You have lived a life of sin. I have lived a life of sin. No one is without sin. The question is not of your past sins, but rather of your current state of redemption. If you are redeemed, then we will no longer speak of your past sins because you are a new person. If you are not yet redeemed, then what are you waiting for? So that's what I was thinking today. I hope that you, that you found it helpful, and I hope that you join us next time on Coin Jive. Mm -hmm.